to another episode of Palisade Radio. We're here at the Palisade Jekyll Island Conference. It's the day after the talks happened, and I'm here with one of my biggest influencers in life. I read this book. It's called The Creature from Jekyll Island some 15 years ago, and I uh, have always wanted to meet Mr. Griffin, and now I've had the chance, and he spoke at our conference as a keynote speaker. Thank you so much for coming down. Well, Colin, thanks for inviting me. It was a real pleasure not only to be here, but to meet you. Yeah, it was a blast, and it's unfortunate that things are coming to an end at the end of the weekend here. Uh, one of the most memorable moments of the conference was being in the Federal Reserve Room, which is actually uh, just a floor below us here, and that's the exact room where the talks went on that ended up culminating in the creation of the Federal Reserve. That's right. That's where it all began. It was, a, as anybody knows that's read in my book, it's a... The reason for the title of the book, The Creature from Jekyll Island, is because this is the island. It's a real island. And uh, for those that want to look it up on the map, it's off the coast of Georgia. And it was in that place, in this building, in the room that you mentioned that we had dinner in last night, where the men came together to create the Federal Reserve System under conditions of great secrecy. That's why they came here, so that nobody would uh, really notice them. This was a private island in those days. It was uh, called the Jekyll Island Club, and indeed it was a very uh, high-level club. You had to be invited to uh, come into it, and only the most uh, wealthy and uh, politically powerful people were here. We're talking about the Rockefellers and J.P. Morgan's family and their business associates. So this is the place where it all began, and when you understand that uh, they had to come to a place like this where they wouldn't be observed, and they had to do all this secrecy that surrounds this meeting uh, back in that day, they were trying to hide something. And that's what triggered me off, uh, Colin, as you know. I, I got curious. Uh, I had no background in money and banking, not much interest in it, because I just assumed that, well, those things are for smart people, not like dummies like me, and they take care of it, and it's all our government, and we can trust our government, and all of those things that I used to believe in. And, um, and so I never took an interest in it, but when I found the secrecy that surrounded the meeting that took place here in this building, this clubhouse, I just had enough uh, instinct, I guess, to know that when people hide something, they're, uh, when they do something in secret, they're trying to hide something. So I wanted to find out what it was <laughs> that they were hiding, and that's the genesis of the whole book. Yeah, and um, I really enjoyed, after you gave the discussion, we were sitting at the table with uh, Eric Sprott, and uh, Eric was dying to meet you and was happy mm -hmm. to uh, have a discussion because he's a... Uh, believes many of the same things that you do about the genesis of this meeting and what it's kind of created now. Did yeah. Eric have any thoughts that he shared with you? Well, yes, he and I, it seemed like we've known each other all of our lives and have traveled the same path. He's quite a guy, and uh, he's the kind of a person that no matter how much you think you know, you can learn a lot just by by talking with him. And there's so many people out there like that. You know, life is a short journey, and... Um, Maybe I'm off the track, but I often think of that of that drawing I saw some years ago. There was a uh, a drawing of a cathedral-like library, an you know, old-style library with ceilings that went up so high that you couldn't see the tops, and books all the way up, and balconies, and ladders, and books on the floor. And there was this window, a bay window, and this guy was sitting, kind of like a monk, you know, mm -hmm. it was his ancient time. He's sitting there, and he's got his head like this, and he's reading a book, and he's got the books stacked here, and a few over here open. And uh, he's really into them, and the title of the thing says, Life is Too Short. And that really made an impact on me because I realized, especially as I get older, that that is so true. It's not just too short because you want to live longer, which is true enough, but it's too short to learn everything. There's so much knowledge out there that uh, anybody that thinks they've got all the answers had better go back and read some more books. That's true. And... Um... I, I guess one, one thought that crossed my mind last night while we were listening to you talk was you wrote this book how many years ago? It was in 1994, 96 you, it was out. And... It, it, the book's made you an internationally recognized author, but have you continued to dive into this story? Have you uncovered more secrets about the event, or do you feel that your your comprehensive review done in this book covered as much detail as you could. Well, the history of it turns out to be pretty accurate. I had a couple of relatively minor errors that were pointed out to me, which I welcomed. 
I said in my forward in the first edition of the book, uh, way back then, is that it, it, it's inevitable that for anybody to take such a long journey through history without stumbling along the way. Mm -hmm. So I invited uh, critique and, and corrections of errors, and uh, much to my pleasant surprise, there were only a few, and they were relatively minor. I got the wrong Tsar Nicholas, uh, number three instead of number two, or something like that. Yes. Relatively minor things. So I was greatly relieved that the historical part, uh, fortunately, turned out to be um, pretty unassailable, I guess. Um, and uh, But since the time of the writing of the book, a lot of history has taken place, and I've tried to update each printing of the book. We now are in our 41st printing. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> Never thought anybody would want to read that big, thick book. But uh, because of the importance of the issues, I suppose that's what's driving that. So we're in our 41st printing now, and uh, it's been printed in five different languages and so forth, much to my amazement. But the point is, though, that each time we do a printing, we update it a little bit, change a name, change a date, add a few paragraphs about some event that has occurred. Uh, for our fifth edition, which was done a few years ago, we added quite a bit of information about the banking crisis that occurred in, uh, you know, with all the bailouts of the banks back in 2008. So that was a major addition. And I have a feeling we're getting ready for another edition very soon because I know that the the banking industry is about ready to face another crisis. So I'm ready for a sixth edition when that happens. So history continues. Excellent. Is this the, this isn't the first time you've been to Jekyll Island, no? No, this happens to be my third time. My first time was uh, before I finished the book. I was researching, came here, check it out, see what it looked like. And also they have a pretty good archives here, a nice library. and. Uh, the ladies there were very helpful. They opened up these drawers. I saw handwritten notes by some of the people who were here, lots of photographs and confirmation of what I had been learning elsewhere. Yeah. Well, I just want to tell our audience this has been one of the most influential books that I ever read. And like I said, it's a pleasure having you here and sitting down with you and doing this interview in person. Well, and thank not you. over the thank phone you. like we usually do. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for <laughs> well, coming to the conference, well, and hopefully next year you'll come back again. Well, Colin, thanks for inviting me, and you can be sure I'll be here. Excellent. think you understand the junior mining sector and you think that the participants in the mining sector, junior mining sector, are good people and kind people, hit the bit. How violent that term could be, it actually could be quite violent. Uh, it could be a rip your face off uh, uranium rally. And the world is always going to need raw material. It's going to need copper and gold and nickel and so forth. Totally destabilized. Hey, hey, troll, did you hear what's going on in Yemen?